What's up Jackalopes? I'm Hope and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about all the things that are in February, which I read seven books, which I was very excited about. Most of them were quite short, but I really enjoyed pretty much everything that I read, so I feel like it was a pretty good month. The first thing I read in February was a one-act play out of this book. I read Swan Song by Anton Chekhov, which is a play about this elderly actor. And by elderly, I mean he's like in his 60s, but this would have been like I want to say late 1800s in Russia. Um, so he's reached this point in his life where he's starting to question his decisions because he feels suddenly like maybe he's wasted his life as an actor. Like maybe he could have gone on to do different things or better things or maybe had had closer relationships but he feels like he's wasted his life. Alternately he also feels like he's this great performer and that he's very proud of the work that he's done. So it's very much about him kind of flip-flopping between those two emotions during like a drunken crisis in the middle of the night. And I think that it's really interesting. It's a very brief play and it kind of leaves you with I guess a lot of questions about like why this man feels this way and stuff like that. But I thought it was an interesting play and it was an easy read. I mean it's like 10 pages long or something. So it was interesting to just sit down and read that on an afternoon and of mull over the ideas of like what it means to live a fulfilled or meaningful life I think is really what it comes down to. So I thought it was good. Then the next thing that I read in February, which I have to look at my list, is The Team Master and the Detective by Elliot Davidard. This is a sci-fi novella that follows um, a sentient mind ship named, oh heck what's the name of the mind ship in that one? The Shadow's Child, I believe, is the name of the ship in that one, uh, who was hired by an eccentric scholar to go out into deep space to find a corpse. And so the book kind of follows their emerging friendship or relationship as this is the first time they've met and they're kind of like both working through things in their past at the time. So it follows both the attempt to get a corpse and also it follows their both of their pasts and the things that they've been through. And um, it's a Sherlock Holmes retelling, so one of the characters is Sherlock Holmes and the other character is supposed to be like John Watson, but it's just a really interesting look at how their relationship forms. And there is a bit of a mystery, there is a murder mystery throughout the book. So I thought it was really good, I really enjoyed it. I love Elliot Davidard's writing. Um, she writes some really great characters and some really interesting settings. So, you know, if you like a mystery and if you like sci-fi, highly recommend that one because it was really good. And then the third thing that I read in February is Death in the Park by London Lovett. This is a cozy mystery set in a small town where this woman who's a journalist has, her life has kind of fallen apart and she moves to this small town to be close to her family and decides to renovate this old Georgian manor and turn it into a bed and breakfast. And while she's there, her first day on the job that she's taken to fund her renovations, which is she's working for the local newspaper, um, she gets this human interest story that turns out to not be very interesting, but very quickly turns into a murder investigation and she becomes determined to solve the murder before the police do. So it's about that. It's also about the character's relationships with her family. I thought it was a fun book. It's very cozy. Um, I liked the mystery. I felt like it had a a, a, it felt like it had a logical ending. I don't know that I loved the ending, but it made sense for the clues that were provided earlier in the book. I didn't feel like it was, you know, coming out of nowhere. It didn't like suddenly give me a bunch of stuff at the end. That it's like, oh, you could never have guessed this because here's all this other stuff you didn't know. But I thought it was a pretty good cozy mystery. So if you like that, it's um, pretty, pretty solid. I'm going to say pretty at least 15 more times in this video. Um, but more interesting about Death in the Park is that I actually worked on a discussion video of this book with Cece from Cece's Reading Journey. We buddy read this book and there is a discussion video about it up on her channel now. So I will link that down in the description below if you want to hear more about this particular book. And also I encourage you to check it out anyway because Cece's channel is great and I think that that video turned out really cool. So The next thing I read was actually a physical book this time. I read African Titanics by Abu Bakr Kal, which is a book about an, uh, a man from Eritrea 
and he is trying to migrate from there to, I think, Britain? He, or Spain, maybe? He's trying to get from Eritrea to um, Europe, and it just follows his journey and what that is like for him trying to migrate across Africa and into Europe. And so this book made me cry. It's very beautifully written. It's also, I think, a very close look at the humanity of the people who are migrating. I think a lot of times when we hear about like the European migration crisis or we think about migration in the US, we tend to think in terms of numbers and we kind of lose sight of the people involved. So I thought that this was a really interesting exploration of like the reasons that people try to migrate away from wherever they're from and the what that experience is actually like. So I highly recommend this one. I read this for a class and like I said, it made me cry. I read it all in one evening, I think. Maybe I read like a, a few pages one day and then I finished the book the next day. It's very short. It's very easy to read in one sitting. Um, in terms of reading, emotionally, it's not easy to read in one sitting, but it's just a very impactful book, I think. So I really enjoyed this one. I'm really glad I picked it up. It's probably not the kind of thing I would pick up of my own accord, but I read it for a class and I am so glad that this got assigned because I think that it's just an excellent, excellent book. And then the next thing I read was also for a class. I read Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. This was the Marie Boroff translation and I don't have a lot to say about this. It's Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. It's weird medieval poetry about Sir Gawain who goes on a quest because a large green man tells him to. So it's fun, it's kind of silly at times, it's full of like religious imagery, kind of your standard medieval poetry thing. But I did enjoy reading this. I thought it was, like I said, quite of a, a fun story. It's definitely weird. I think medieval art and, and literature tends to be kind of on the weird and wacky side, at least from what I've read. So I enjoyed it. Don't have much to say about it, but like, if you're at all interested in um, the kind of King Arthur mythos, or not mythos, the King Arthur legends, this is, you know, probably, this is my first one I've read, so I'd, I'd suggest it's a good starting point. But yeah, just kind of a weird book. And then after that, I picked up something that I wanted to read, which is Fireheart Tiger by Elliot de Bedard. This came out at the beginning of February, and I was so excited because I think I said this a few minutes ago when I was talking about the team master and the detective, but I absolutely love her writing. Her characters are great. So this one follows uh, Tan, who basically is this princess. She's from a small empire? A small empire. I'm gonna call it a small empire. Um, and she has was sent away as a very young child to this northern empire. She lived there for several years of her life from I think the time she's like 12 until she's 18 and now she's been back in her home country for several years but while she was living in this northern kingdom called Octaria uh, the palace there burned down and so she has this kind of memory that's haunting her about the palace burning down but at the outside of this book a group of uh, people from Octaria are coming to negotiate with her mother who's the empress and Tan gets assigned as kind of the diplomat person here. She's in charge of guiding negotiations, but things kind of go awry when it turns out that one of the people in the other delegation is the princess of Octaria, with whom Tan had a relationship for several years. So it follows both the story of Tan and what is Eldris, the other princess's relationship, and it also follows kind of the story of how Afteria is wanting to kind of conquer Tan's home. And so it follows, it, it looks at abusive relationships at kind of a micro and macro level, and it's just a really, really well written book. And this is another one that I like basically sat down and read in one sitting because it's so short. I highly, highly recommend this one. I love it. The only thing I didn't like about it was that it was so short because I wanted more of this world and these characters. But I also feel like the story is just like, it, it comes to its natural conclusion at the end of this. This is just so well written and I love everything about it. So like, if, if you don't pick up anything else that I talk about ever, pick up this one because it's fantastic. And then the last thing that I read was 
Rat Queens Volume 1, and I really enjoyed this. I think that there's some interesting character dynamics happening here. I want to know more about the characters. There's some kind of background stuff that starts to get introduced towards the end of this volume. And I liked this way more than I thought I would. I really didn't have any expectations going in. I just know that this is um, quite well liked by a lot of people. So I thought I'd give it a try and I enjoyed it. So I don't have much else to say about it beyond that. I think I would need to get further into the series to have many thoughts on like the actual storylines or the characters themselves. But what's introduced here I think is really interesting and I am looking forward to reading the next few volumes. But that's everything I read in February. Oh my god. My arm's sore. Um, that's all the books I read in February and like I said I'm really happy with that. I enjoyed all of them and I think it was a good month. But thanks for joining me for this discussion. I'm just gonna sit here holding my very sore arm now. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed talking about these books. This was a month where I didn't have super strong feelings about a lot that I read, but obviously African Titanics and then the two books by Ali David Ard that I read. I absolutely loved all of those. So you know, I'm hoping that March will be a stronger month for books that I have strong opinions on, but we shall see. Anyway, thanks again for watching. If you want to connect with me on social media, my Goodreads and Twitter will be linked in the description below, and I hope to see you in the next video. So, bye!